All right. Welcome to our first lecture. We're going to be talking about very basic things. What is science? What is chemistry? Go into a little bit of the things that need to be discussed. All right. So, what is science? Hey, science as a term didn't really uh, come into vogue until uh, the latter half of the 19th century. Before that, it was called natural philosophy, and scientists went by natural philosophers. Works just fine. Science is philosophy, and philosophy is science. Uh, it's just that one has more data, one has less data. They're just investigating whatever comes to mind. Uh, at the turn of the 20th century, you can still find textbooks on engineering, even, uh, talking about uh, their subject as being applications of natural philosophy. Works just fine. Science is just studying the universe and seeing what happens when you poke it. Uh, the scientific method itself, you, know, you just gather data, make a guess as to why things happen, and then you try to prove it wrong. Not right, because proving things right scientifically, not so much possible. You just keep proving something not wrong until you give up and say, okay, I guess we're right. But proving something wrong is easy. It just takes one failed experiment to prove that you're wrong. One of the hallmarks of pseudoscience is that they try to prove themselves right, if they try to prove anything at all. So chemistry is one of the branches of science, specifically the physical sciences, along with physics. Uh, chemistry deals with substances and their chemical and physical changes, their properties, things like that. But the branches of science, they're, they're not all that separate. They, they blur together. You know, chemistry goes into physics, physical chemistry and chemical physics. It also blurs into biology, you know, microbio, biochem, organic chem. Okay, these things all mix and merge at the edges. But chemistry mostly deals with matter. So what's matter? Everything is matter, except for space and energy. So almost nothing is matter. Uh, the overwhelming majority of the universe is ener energy in space. Uh, matter is like lint at the very edges of existence. Doesn't make up very much of it. But that's pretty much all that chemistry deals with. So what is matter? Matter is anything with mass and volume. Um, mass is the physical measure of inertia. You know, how much effort does it take to get something to move? How much effort does it take to get it to stop moving? How much effort does it take to get it to change direction when it is moving? Okay. Uh, volume, you're into the, that. That's more philosophical territory. You know, what is what is space? You know, um, but you know anything that takes up space. Just just go with your gut on that one. So matter, matter, anything that has mass and takes up space. Uh, matter comes in different states: uh, solid, liquid, and gas. So, you know, you know a, a solid is anything that has a definite size and a definite shape. A uh, liquid has a definite size, or it is, say, volume. Um, and, but it doesn't have a definite shape. You know, it will change to modify its shape to the shape of the container. Uh, gas has neither size nor shape. So it will take the shape of its container and it will expand to fill its container. Okay. So those are the broad differences between them. Um, when you actually look inside solids, liquids, and gases, there are more differences. We'll, we'll be getting into those later. But for now, just think about size and shape. You know, meh, uh, uh, you know these are talking about volume. All right. Uh, there are other forms of matter. Those aren't the only ones allowed. Uh, there's, for example, plasmas. It's when you heat up a gas so hot that uh, even the electrons start to get stripped off of the atoms. Um, so you're left with you know a cloud of ions moving at ridiculous velocities. It um, has very strange and interesting properties. Kind of fun to play with, you know, if you like playing with things hotter than the surface of the sun. Um, we won't be doing that in class. Um, but they're, they're, they're very weird in comparison to regular things, you know, at room temperature. Um, you can also get neutron stars, which is when, you know, something gets so dense, so massive, that the electrons actually pulled or pushed into the, uh, into the nucleus of the atom. Um, 
And then, you know, protons will combine with electrons and you get neutrons. So a neutron star is nothing but neutrons. Um, and they're, they're held apart by nuclear forces. Uh, it's, it's really weird. <laughs> um, and, and finally, you can get black holes. Um, uh, where, where things have gotten so dense, so compressed, that matter itself is just sort of just said, screw it, I'm, I'm a black hole now. <laughs> and uh, that, that's so weird that we don't even really know what's going on in there. You know, Matt, physics has said, you know, no, I'm just not going to go there. Okay. Again, we're not going to be playing with black holes, uh, just solids, liquids, and gases. All right, so the properties of matter uh, can be divided into uh, uh, the two halves, uh, two sections. Um, their physical properties deal with uh, the properties of the states of matter or moving between them without changing from one substance to another. Okay, so you, you take solid ice, you melt it to make liquid water, it's still the same substance, H2O. Um, you heat it up further, eventually it'll turn into as gas, steam, it's still H2O. It's the same substance in different states. Um, but chemical properties uh, that tells you how and why one substance will change into another substance, or two substances into two substances, or two into one, one into two, and so on. So when you heat up limestone, it will uh, uh, it'll decompose, turn into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. You know, chalk will turn into uh, a nasty salt and CO2, air. Um, whereas hydrogen and oxygen, you put them together, you provide a spark, and boom you've got water. Those are chemical changes. So chemical changes, chemical properties. Uh, but physical properties can also be classified as extensive or intensive. Okay. Extensive depends on how much of the material is present. Uh, so, for example, the mass of an object. You know, if a bigger object is going to have more mass, an extensive property. Volume is an extensive property. Okay. Anything that changes when you have more stuff present is extensive. Okay. Now, the extent, um, exterior, how big is the exterior? Yeah. Um, intensive is independent of the amount of material present. Okay. So density is an intensive property. Okay. Density is the relationship between mass and volume. Okay. So grams per liter or pounds per cubic foot. Ooh, that's a terrible three pounds per cubic foot, those are measures of density. Okay, so this tiny little cube of gold is going to have a density of, you know, I don't know, call it nine grams per cubic centimeter. Um, a great big, you know, cube of gold is going to also be nine grams per cubic centimeter. Density is the relationship between mass and volume. You know, how much of that substance takes up how much volume. Okay. So different amounts of substance will take up different volumes, but the relationship between the two will always be the same. Okay. Similarly, melting point or boiling point. Okay. You heat up a gram of water, it's going to melt at 0 degrees Celsius. It'll boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Take 5,000 gallons of water, and it'll melt at 0 degrees Celsius and boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. Those are intensive properties. It doesn't matter how much is present. Now, how much heat it takes to get you to each of those temperatures is going to change. You know, heating up, you know, a gram of water from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius takes a lot less energy than heating up a swimming pool. But they'll boil and melt at the same temperature. Okay, so that's the difference between extensive and, and intensive. Hello, kitty cat. I love you. I know I'm talking. Go away. Um, okay. So finally, I've talked about substances. Substances um, is just stuff, but we can talk about different kinds of substances. So, um, pure substances are anything where you cannot separate them physically. Okay? So, where they could be a single element, like pure oxygen or pure iron. Those are pure substances, but it could also be a compound, like water, or uh, that's methylene chloride right here. Um, that's a powerful organic solvent. You do not want to play with that unless you like dissolving your flesh. Um, but the point is, you know, you can boil those, you can freeze them, you can put them through a distillery, you can do whatever you want to them physically, you'll only ever get the same substance out. Okay, those are pure. Um, a, a mixture is when you have multiple pure substances. Okay, so multiple elements, multiple compounds, or a mixture of elements and compounds. 
Um, mixtures can be further divided into homogeneous, note the second E, and heterogeneous. Okay, So a homogeneous mixture is when there are no boundaries in between the things inside your mixture. Okay, they're, they're perfectly uniform throughout. Okay, So Windex, coffee, uh, salt water, iced tea. Okay, These things, you look at them, you know, this area over here is going to look exactly like this area over here. Okay, they're all exactly the same throughout. Homogeneous. Heterogeneous means that there are boundaries. You can actually see differences between, you know, this area and this area. Okay, different areas have different uh, uh, properties. Okay, so salad or um, actually I don't know about balsamic vinaigrette. I, I should have used just vinegar and oil, but anything where you. Uh, you can you could separate them simply and easily, you know, by hand, more or less. Okay, you know, you could you, you can pick the tomatoes out of out of your salad. Okay, you know, you can pour oil off the top of water. I don't know why I'm talking with my hands so much. You can't see it. Okay, um, but so basically, going from bottom to top here. Okay, these heterogeneous, they are fairly easy to separate physically. Okay, homogeneous, they can still be separated physically. But uh, not not so easily, you know. You have to boil water off to leave the salt behind, that sort of thing. Uh, and up here with pure substances, uh, those cannot be separated physically. They can only be separated chemically, you know, using electricity to crack water into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay? Or you know, with you know, elemental oxygen, uh, you would have to put in even more energy to separate the two atoms of oxygen. But iron. The, you'd have to put that into a nuclear reactor to split the atom. Um, that, that you can't even separate that chemically. Okay, so from bottom to top, you're going from more complex to less complex, um, and easier to separate to harder to separate. Okay, and that does it for this first lecture.